In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create these sub labels here, or basically a category label. And here we have the individual label of every single bar. And this is just a quick warning. It's a bit of a trick way we are going to use some tricks in this. So it will only work in certain specific cases. So let's start to look how to do this. So let's start to explore how to add the sub labels on the Y skill in ChartJS. And I'm going to warn you, this is a little bit of a hacky or a workaround. So it's not really the best solution, but it's suitable if you have the situation what we're going to make here. So first of all, what we're going to do is we need to have the boiler template, which you can find here on chartjs3.com. Getting started, this specific link is as well in the description box. Once you're on the site, scroll, uh, scroll down and copy all of this boiler template code. Copy this. If you want to understand the boiler template code, please watch this video here that explains it all. Paste it in there, and once we did that, I'm going to cut out this, put it in here, save, refresh, there we are. So what I'm going to do is maximize this, save that, make it 80%, there we are. Now we have this, let's start to work on our tricky way of making the scale. So what we're going to do here, first of all, I want to convert this into a Y axis, or at least this here should go here. So let's do that first. So we're going to make a horizontal bar chart. I'm going to say here index axis, and then this will be equal to the Y string for the Y scale. Save this, refresh. There we are. So this works. Then of course this begin at zero should be on the X. That makes more sense. There we are. All right. So what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to put a comma here. And I'm going to say here for the Y axis, because we're going to have a Y axis, and we're going to say a type will be category, although this is not really necessary. And the reason why is it's already by default a category if it's a bar chart, because a bar chart has these categories or these labels, and these are considered categories. So that's very important to understand. So then next, what I want to do is imagine we're going to have these labels, but I'm going to remove the labels here, and I'm going to specify them here within here. So we're going to say here labels and in this case the labels will have a different name. It's a shop one. And then let's copy, make sure the comma here and then copy this. And I'll put in uh, how many, I guess six items. And you're going to do six because I'm doing this on purpose six because it will divide it by two basically later on you will see that. So we need only six items or equal items and your division must be exactly equal as well so if it's, it's three three for six uh four 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 eight etc etc so this is very important so once we have this here we have the type the category and then uh, uh here basically we can just save this for now and if i refresh you will see here this changes and it will skip the last value so that is all correct because the label will be uh, prioritized uh, or the labels get the priority in chart yes Next, what I want to do is just a comma here, and I'm going to change here a new item. I'm going to say here this will be our y axis, or y, uh, y number two. I guess that should be a nice name. And then I'm going to give it here labels as well, but this time I'm going to give it only three labels. I'm going to say here branch one. So let's copy this, put it in there, there, and then like that. And then if I save this, refresh you can see it starts to work already nicely but you will see here some space is required here however as you can see here this is the reason why it divides it if we have three items here it divides the upper one in two segments or basically in pairs of two and that means that we are truly dependent on a equal amount of numbers so it always must be an even number not an odd number so this is really that's why what i indicate a hacky way but a very simple way so what I do want to do here, because you can see we have these thicker lines here, I want you can keep them, but if you don't want them, you can just do this. I'm going to say your grid, and I'm going to say here draw on chart area. We set this on false. I save this, refresh. There we are. So now these thicker lines here, although they might be very nice because they will nicely segment these sep or create a separation. But we remove them now, so you can remove them like this. So this, I'm just showing you all the options. Finally, 
you might say, well, hold on, look, this is quite nearby. That's correct. So let's try to change it. Give this some, I guess, padding. That's the right term. So what I'm going to do here, in the y-axis, just here above, we can do it at the bottom. And I'm going to say here, after fit. And after fit is a very useful function. I still don't understand this fully, but I do understand this part. So I'm going to say here CTX, because this is basically a callback functionality that allows us to do some additional recalculation at the very end after the scale has been drawn so that's very nice so once we have this what i want to do here first of all i want to show you the cdx what that means so what we're going to do here is a console log ctx save this and if i save this and refresh open developer tab nothing happens here but we get this nice ctx which is basically just the chart object However, what I want to grab here, and this is with the afterfit, we are allowed to recalculate, for example, the width of this specific chart, so or the chart area. So if I go down here and I'm going to say here the width, you can see here it's 52. So this here to here is about 52 pixels. And what I want to do is I want to give it just 10 pixels more. So we're going to add up here 10 pixels, or basically add, push this more to the right. So we have some space here. So what I'm going to say here, and that's what I need. Look at here, we have here the width, uh, WW, there we are, the width. That's 52 point plus plus. So what I'm going to say here, I'm going to say here CTX dot width, and I'm going to say here plus equals 10 pixels. So basically what I'm doing is, whatever it is already, we just add up 10 more pixels, and that's it. So we're going to save this, refresh, and you can see here now, look at that beautifully. We have now additional space. Of course, let me just show you. Let's make this 100. If I save that, there we are. We can squeeze or reduce the size of the scale even more. But of course, I don't want this. Oh, sorry, that's not what I wanted. I just put 10 pixels that is more than sufficient. And there we are. So this is basically a way how you can put in nice Y, additional Y sub labels here just by playing around clever with the Y scales. Because basically, I have a second Y scale. That's what we're doing here. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to make, for example, clickable scales, I'm going to recommend you this video here on how to create clickable y-axis scales or clickable y-axis with links in Chart.js, which would make just another level on your existing scales that we have here.